Today I'm out here in Banff National Park in Canada taking a look at the all new Volvo V60 Cross Country. In theory, this is the exact kind of wagon that was designed with my demographic in mind. I live in rural America, I drive a half mile or a mile down a gravel road in order to get to the paved road to drive to work, and then I drive on winding mountain roads once I'm on pavement. So this is exactly the kind of vehicle that was designed for me. Unlike most luxury car companies, Volvo remains very dedicated to the station wagon in America. We're going to get four different wagons for 2020. The V90 and V90 Cross Country, they're larger than this. Then we're going to get the V60 and this V60 Cross Country right here. For 2020, the only true direct competitor to this is going to be the refreshed Audi A4 Allroad. At least for the moment, there is no 2020 BMW 3 Series wagon, no 2020 Mercedes-Benz C-Class wagon either. Scheduling has been a little bit tricky today because there have been a lot of Volvo models to drive. I've also been able to drive the refreshed 2020 XC90. Expect a video on that on the channel as well. And then we've also been able to get our hands on the all new XC60 Polestar engineered. That has 415 horsepower. It is a plug-in hybrid, so expect a video on that as well. Up front, the V60 Cross Country gets some minor tweaks versus the regular version of the V60 to make this look a little bit more rugged. But the big thing that you're going to notice is the ground clearance. It's been increased by two and a half inches, giving this a ground clearance very similar to what we see in certain Jeep Grand Cherokee models. Ground clearance is especially important when off-roading or taking your vehicle like this a little bit off the beaten path. If you want to go on a camping trail, go hiking, something along those lines, take your mountain bike somewhere, you're going to want that extra level of ground clearance. You could logically expect the V6 to be an upgrade over something like a Subaru Outback. A lot of our viewers have been asking me to compare Volvo's cross-country wagons to the Subaru Outback. They are similarly themed in that they are both wagons that are designed for off-road duty, but they're also quite different because Subaru is not a luxury brand and Volvo most certainly is. So you notice that we have a very different overall style in the Volvo, it definitely is a little bit more upscale. Obviously this is going to be more expensive than the Subaru Outback as well. And for that money, you're gonna get a slightly smaller vehicle because the V90 is a little bit closer to the Outback in terms of overall size, this is a little bit shorter. With this generation, the S60 and the V60 grew considerably over the last generation, but this is still considered a compact European luxury vehicle. This is a compact wagon. The S60, of course, is a compact sedan. And that means that we get a little bit less room on the inside than the larger V90. The V60 is, of course, very closely related to the V90, and it's really obvious when you take a look at the front end right here. It also is very obviously different than a mainstream wagon like the Subaru Outback because we get a much longer hood. It gives us that luxury proportion that luxury shoppers expect. Now, we still have a transverse engine under the hood, but the long hood proportion is there to give this that stately presence and also improve overall crash safety. Outback, the difference between the cross-country and non-cross-country versions of the V60 is relatively minor compared with the front. We have the same tail lamp modules. We do have red turn signals. That's not my preference. I wish they did give us amber lenses back here, but that's the new Volvo style. We have the same sheet metal going on that we find in the regular V60. Really, the only difference is going to be this lower portion of the bumper right here. We still get twin integrated exhaust tips, and exhaust gas actually comes out of these tips, not like modern Audis where they're completely fake. Volvo has not been terribly specific about the possibility of perhaps getting their turbocharged and supercharged engine under this hood or the plug-in hybrid system, but I suspect the plug-in hybrid may be a little bit further off. The main reason for that is that Volvo's plug-in hybrid can't send as much power to the rear wheels as this particular mechanical all-wheel drive system can. As you'd expect in an off-road oriented vehicle, all-wheel drive is standard on the V60 Cross Country. If you'd like a Volvo wagon with a little bit more oomph, you can get the 415 horsepower plug-in hybrid system in the new Polestar engineered version of the V60, but you can't get that with the lift that we see in this model. Power is routed to the wheels via a standard 8-speed automatic transmission, and that will get you 25 miles per gallon combined in mixed driving. That is a little bit below what we see in something like the Subaru Outback, but remember, this is a luxury vehicle, so we actually get the performance that we find in the Outback XT, more or less, with better interior trappings, and that means the vehicle is going to be a little bit heavier than what we see in the Subaru. We also don't have a continuously variable transmission, so if you dislike the way CVTs feel, that'd be another reason you might want to upgrade into something like the Volvo. One thing you'll notice immediately from the side profile are these wheels and the tires. We have 40 series tires, so these don't give you as much cushion as we find in some of the off-road competition, but they're fairly wide. We have 245 width tires. Volvo tells us that they've tuned this suspension to be a little bit softer than the regular versions of the V60 that is going to make this more comfortable out on rougher roads, but they still have retained that classic Volvo suspension tune, meaning that this is going to be firmer than something like a Subaru Outback or some of those other off-road wagons that are out there. 
Keep in mind that with 40 series tires, these aren't going to be able to handle quite the same kind of impacts that you may find in more off-road oriented vehicles, like something along the lines of a Subaru Outback. But this is definitely more on-road focused than the Subaru. As you'd expect out of a modern Volvo, front seat comfort is excellent in the V60. These seats are not quite as adjustable as some of the seats that we see in Volvo's other models in America, especially like the XC60. So for instance, this particular seat has the extending thigh cushion and four-way adjustable lumbar support, but we don't have the available inflatable side bolsters or the available seat massage like you would find in the XC line. As we see in other wagons in America, the seat bottom cushion is a little bit closer to the ground than the average crossover. So the big difference between this and something like the XC60 is the overall seating position. We're a little bit more reclined both in the front seats and in the back seats. The seats are a little bit closer to the ground, but overall we have relatively the same amount of room. Wagons are all about cargo practicality and Volvo's V60 is no different. Of course, with two different wagons in their lineup, this is the smaller one. So if you want more cargo capacity, you'd want to look at something like the V90. Wagon fans frequently ask, why aren't wagons more popular in America? Well, I think it's easy to see within Volvo's lineup because the V60 Cross Country and the XC60 are not too far off in terms of overall price. They're not too far off in terms of overall length, but we do get more cargo capacity in the XC60. So if you're looking for a more car-like driving experience, that's why you'd want to get the V60. If you want more cargo capacity or a little bit more cargo practicality, you might want to look at the XC60 instead. Off-roading fans in the crowd will note that we don't get a full-size spare tire back here, but at least we do have a spare rather than a can of fix-a-flat. As we look around the interior, you'll notice that the vast majority of this interior is identical to the S60, just as you'd expect out of a wagon variant. We have height adjustable shoulder belts for the driver and front passenger, and fixed height headrests. The panoramic moonroof extends to just over the rear passenger's heads, and this model does have leather upholstery. You can see we have that little Swedish flag right there on the front seat, something that we've seen in other Volvo models for a while. From this angle, you can see the extending thigh cushion. And as we move on over to the front doors, you'll notice that we find a higher percentage of soft touch materials than in the mainstream category. So if you're trying to compare this to something like that Subaru Outback, that's gonna be one of those big differences. This interior is definitely put together with more precision and better quality materials. You'll really notice that in the upper end trim, if we move on over to the dashboard, because we do get the stitched leather dashboard, it really has a nice look to it. And then we have this very interesting wood trim right here. There are a number of different trim options. There's a metal trim, there's a wood trim option, depending on the different versions that you get. The overall styling of this interior is definitely very similar to the V90, the XC90, etc. It's all definitely in the Volvo family. Volvo recently refreshed their infotainment system. They've given it a much faster processor than before. So if you thought that this was a little bit slower in the past, you might want to try it again. That change happened in the 2019 calendar year. If we move down here to this row of buttons, it's basically the same as what we see in the XC90. We have hazard lights, defogger, defroster, track forward, backward, volume knob right there in the middle. We then have a pretty traditional console shifter, drives all the way back, and then there's a manual mode on the left side. There are no paddles on the back of this steering wheel. We then have roller covers for small storage cubby right there and then a roller cover for those cup holders in the center console as well we have the start stop toggle that we see in other volvo models drive mode roller electric parking brake electric brake hold and then if we move on over to the driver's side we do find a full lcd instrument cluster in this particular model there are a few different variety of views that you can select there you can check out some of our other volvo videos for how that looks we get the same steering wheel as other Volvo models. The buttons on the right side of the steering wheel act as volume up, down, track, forward, backward, and they interact with that multifunction LCD right there. And then on the left side of the steering wheel, we have the controls for the Raider Adaptive Cruise Control and Volvo's Pro Pilot Assist System. Out on the road, the V60 Cross Country drives very much like the regular V60 wagon, even though we have those extra two and a half inches of ground clearance. The overall ground clearance comes in at 8.3 inches, which is definitely in the same territory as the Jeep Grand Cherokee and that Subaru Outback that I keep talking about. But the way the V60 Cross Country drives and feels out on the road is very unlike the Subaru. That's because Volvo is definitely focusing on on-road driving dynamics, so the suspension is a great deal firmer than in the Outback. Even though the Outback doesn't have that much more ground clearance than the V60, it definitely feels like it's higher off the road. We get an awful lot more body roll, an awful lot more tip and dive than we see in the V60. The Outback feels very much like a typical crossover in America, whereas the V60 definitely has more of a European sports sedan feel to it, even though we have 8.3 inches of ground clearance. As I said earlier in the video, we do have lower profile tires in the V60 Cross Country than we find in the average crossover in America. So it's gonna give your rims a little bit less protection, a little bit less cushion. It also is gonna give the ride a bit of a firmer feel, whether we're talking about driving out on a gravel path like we're on right here, 
whether we're going a little bit more seriously off-road or whether we're driving on a regular paved road. The logic behind this design with the V60 Cross Country is that if you're the kind of person that may live down a gravel road, this is going to be a perfectly acceptable suspension for those shorter gravel road runs. So if you're driving a mile or perhaps even five miles down a gravel road to get to the paved road, so you want that extra assurance, that extra bit of ground clearance so you can clear some of those obstacles out there that may have fallen down in the night on your way to the office but then you're driving on regular roads the rest of the time, the V60 is going to feel very, very composed, whether we're talking about the cross-country version or the non-cross-country version. They're going to be relatively similar in terms of overall handling feel out on the road, even though, again, we get very similar ground clearance in the V60 cross-country. In terms of 0-60 to 60 performance, the V60 cross-country is probably going to come in right around 5.5 seconds. That's going to be a hair slower than the front-wheel drive version of the V60 because the V60 cross-country is just a hair heavier. Overall 60 to 0 stopping distances are probably going to be pretty similar, about 110, 112 feet or so, definitely shorter than the average crossover in America, definitely shorter than something like that Subaru Outback, because again, it's a very different kind of vehicle. Overall handling ability is logically going to take a little bit of a toll versus the V60 because of the overall ride height increase and the extra weight that we get there. But on the flip side, the overall ride quality is pretty similar. I do think it's just a hair better in the V60 cross country, but it's a little bit difficult to tell without having been able to drive them back to back. Cabin noise should logically be pretty similar as well. That was 71 decibels the last time we tested a V60 officially at home. We haven't had the time to test this at home, obviously, because we've been out here in Canada, but I expect this is going to be basically the same. Overall fuel economy, again, is likely going to be a little bit different because of the standard all-wheel drive system, but judging by Volvo's previous vehicles, it's probably going to come in right around that EPA figure. Hopefully, we'll be able to get our hands on the refreshed 2020 A4 All-Road. Previous to this model year, the new 2020 A4, the Audi wasn't exactly a direct competitor to the V60 Cross Country because it was a notable amount closer to the ground. It only had about six and a half inches of ground clearance. But for 2020, Audi is bumping it up to 7.9. Now that's still about a half inch closer to the ground than the V60, but it's an awful lot closer than it was before. Not all the details are out just yet about the new A4 All-Road, but we expect its power figures to come in right about the same 250 or so horsepower that we see in the V60. So overall, 0-60 to 60 performance is likely going to be pretty similar. And some folks may be surprised by this, but overall handling is also likely going to be pretty similar. That's because even though the A4 uses a longitudinal engine, the entire engine is hanging out in front of the front axle. And that ends up giving the A4 All-Road and the V60 wagon fairly similar overall weight balances. When it comes to overall handling dynamics out on the road, the A4 and the S60 and V60 have been pretty darn similar, and I don't expect that to change for the 2020 refresh of the A4, since it's not a complete redesign of the platform. Comparisons to the XC60 are inevitable out on the road. The V60 definitely feels a little bit more nimble on the road because it's closer to the ground, center of gravity appears to be a little bit lower than the XC60, but the bigger difference seems to be the overall suspension tuning. And it's worth noting that you can get the XC60 with Volvo's four-corner air suspension. That definitely is going to give you a plusher ride. It's also going to allow you to raise the ride height up and lower it back down as well. The big deal for that is that out on a rougher road like we're on right here, it's definitely going to give you a more polished ride than what we see in the V60. But when the road starts bending and the pavement gets better, the V60 is going to be more fun without question. Now on the downside, the V60 is not going to have the same level of power that we find in the XC60 or in the V90 or V90 Cross Country. Those are available with the more powerful engines from the Volvo lineup, and I think that's a little bit of a pity. I really hope that Volvo puts the T6 drivetrain into the V60 Cross Country at some point. That would be a great option, because again, there aren't very many wagons in this category in America, and the T6 engine would be a really interesting counterpoint to the upcoming 2020 Audi A4 All-Road. The V60 Cross Country is going to start at $45,100. That is a noticeable jump over the regular V60. That's because for 2020, there's going to be no all-wheel drive version of the V60 outside the Polestar engineered version. So at least for the moment, the V60 comes in three basic forms. There's the regular wagon, which is again two and a half inches closer to the ground. That gets you the T5 engine, same one as this, front-wheel drive. Then we get this model here, which has been lifted to give it more off-road ability, more off-road clearance. 
This is going to give you all-wheel drive standard. And then we have the Polestar engineered V60, which again drops things down closer to the ground and then gives you the E all-wheel drive system and 415 horsepower. The model that we've spent most of our time in today is this one right here. And this is an almost fully loaded V60 cross country. It came in right around $57,000. I'd say that for 2020, there are three main competitors to the V60 cross country. We obviously have the refreshed 2020 Audi A4 Allroad. Be sure and stay tuned. I will have a video review on that just as soon as I can get my hands on it. We then have Volvo's own V90 cross country, which I think is an excellent alternative to this because it's a little bit more comfortable inside, a little bit larger, a little bit roomier. And the price tag is not too far off what we see here. And then of course we have something like the Subaru Outback, which as I said at the beginning of the video, really isn't the same thing as the V60 cross country any more than a Toyota Camry is the same thing as a BMW 5 Series. Now, obviously you could cross shop this to something like the Subaru, but you'd have to decide, do you want the luxury vehicle? Do you want the luxury trappings on the inside, the luxury style, et cetera, the luxury dealership experience, or do you want a mainstream brand? We've had a relatively limited amount of time with this particular model out on regular roads. Most of our time has been spent out on gravel roads. However, I can safely say, this handles better than the Subaru Outback. It's really no contest. A lot of that has to do with just the way that the V60 is constructed. The overall suspension design is definitely a little bit more on-road focused. If you really wanted to take your off-road wagon more truly off-roading, however, the Subaru Outback might be a slightly better option. The higher aspect ratio tires are gonna give you a little bit more cushion, especially if we're talking about a rocky road like we're on right here. With a starting price of about $45,000, you could see this as a rational upgrade from something like the Subaru Outback. But the character of the vehicles is quite different, not the least of which is the fact that this is a luxury vehicle and that's a mainstream vehicle. You'll see the same sort of differences between something along the lines of the Outback and this cross country as you would if you were comparing a Toyota Camry to a BMW 5 Series. We find much better interior materials. We get the stitch leather dashboard in this model, for instance, the real wood trim if you choose that particular option, better quality leathers. Everything is just put together with a higher level of precision. We get a better dealership experience, the longer warranty, et cetera. We also get a suspension and a chassis that is definitely designed more for on-road sporty driving. So unquestionably, this is more fun out on the road than the Subaru Outback, absolutely without question. We get that traditional automatic transmission, we get the wide 245 with tires, we get a suspension that's a little bit firmer, and of course we get tires that have a little bit more of an on-road focus than we see in the Outback. On the other hand, if you're going to go a little bit off the beaten path, the Outback's tires are going to give you a little bit more cushion when it comes to rocks like this or larger rocks out on the road than we find in the tires on this particular model. But truly, I think in America at the moment, the closest direct competitor to this is going to be either the Audi A4 Allroad or Volvo's own V90 wagon. Let me know what you think about that down there in the comments section below. From what I know at this moment, the V60 cross country should be a little bit less expensive than the Audi A4 Allroad, but the A4 is gonna give you a few more gadgets and features that we don't find available in the V60. All things considered, the V60 is gonna be the better deal overall compared to the A4, but I have to say the new A4 does look pretty tasty. And again, stay tuned for that video just as soon as we can get our hands on it. Personally, if I were shopping in this particular segment right now, I have to say the V60 is very, very interesting because I said at the beginning of this video, it fits my demographic just about perfectly. I live down a mile long gravel road. I live in the country. I go up and over a winding 2200 foot mountain pass every day. So this is exactly the kind of car that theoretically would be designed for me. But I have to say, if I were gonna buy one, I would probably get the V90 cross country instead. I just like the way the V90 is put together a little bit more than the V60. We get a little bit more cargo room overall, we get a little bit more rear leg room, and then we get an interior design that is just a tiny bit more premium. Again, the V90 is the next category up in Volvo's lineup. So let me know what you think about all that down there in the comment section below, and let me know what you would pick if you were shopping in this segment. Would you go down in value and get something like that Outback or perhaps something like the Buick Regal Wagon? That future is a little bit uncertain at this point in time in America. That's why we haven't mentioned it too much in this video. Or would you get the Volvo? Let me know down there in the comment section below, and I'll see you later.